Can you hear me? Is that okay? You guys are right at the back there? Um, good morning, guys. My name's Dean. I'm the older brother of Stu. Um, I live in Australia, but came back, obviously, for, for, for Stu and, and managed to see him for a couple of days just before he passed. Um, just to get some technical stuff out of the way, the loser at the back there the loo in there as well, just, just so people know that. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for all of you coming to test me to who Stu was. Uh, that so many come out for him. Um, and it's good that you all come and that we're going to honor the memory of Stu. He's obviously impacted each of your lives to some extent. And my assumption is that he was a good friend to many of you, um, a boss to some of you, and an employee of a few of you as well. My memories of Stu have always been that he was always kind-hearted. He was there for his family. He was always a laugh. I loved his laugh. Uh, both he and I traveled as young guys, hitchhiking through England. I tried to get some culture into him. I took him to Stratford-upon-Avon. We watched a few Shakespeare things. And then we couldn't find a place to sleep, so we ended up climbing over somebody's hedge and camping in their garden for the night and leaving again without a trace. Um, but. Words that come to mind about Stu is laughter, kindness, helping people, friendship, horses, polo, meat, eccentric fashion sense. In terms of human characteristics, he was a very wealthy person. Stu had just over a year's cancer fight. It was not easy. And there were many who supported him through this battle. Several took a lot of the load. 
Mandy, Jess, Luke, Saucy, Sally, you guys took something, it's just, it's next level. And you did really well through it. And I just want to congratulate you. It wasn't easy to see that. And that uh, you did really well there. And um, well done. Sonia, you were next level. <sighs> yeah. Ian, Joe, Meg, you guys all came in and stepped up. And thank you. Finally, Mum. Not easy to see your son go. And you spend many nights with him. Well done. Thank you. You're a great mom. Peggy, you were great at sorting out all the legal and the police stuff. And Angelique Prince-Lou was just wonderful down in um, South Africa, just giving up to a place to stay, looking after him. There were lots of friends who loaned medical equipment, oxygen, nebulizers, all that sort of stuff. Um, as I think of Stu in um, this environment of grief and to some extent loss and remembrance, three words come to mind for Stu for me. The one is family, the next is friendship, and the final one which I'm going to deal with is faith. Family, Jess, Alaska, Libby, they're going to take some part in, in talking about that. Friendship, Mark Swanick is going to take a little bit about that, but I'll talk about Stu's faith, which he had before he got sick. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says this, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind, who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. A couple of years back, I was at UWA University, and I was at a euthanasia conference. Um, it was just a one day, and I met a couple of people there. And one of the guys I met was a guy called Professor Doug Bridges. And he was a palliative care professor at UWA. And my son and I, we, we had this thing that we wanted to go and see I said to him, son, you need to go along uh, to this because I want you to see what people care about when they die. And the argument was, was when you see what people care about when they die, don't lose their He gave me a PowerPoint presentation, which I can't play here, but I can explain it. And basically there were four, four slides and four squares, four areas. And in the first slide was a working, normal working person's life. And obviously the biggest box in that slide was work. And then there was a small box for family, another box for fun, another box for spirit. And spirituality was a very small box, health, house, all those sort of things, car. The next slide was a sick person's life. And the big box was just health. Work had shrunk right down. Family had increased a bit. Spirituality had increased a bit. But that sick person, all they wanted to do was get well. The next slide was a dying person's life. And there were just two boxes. Everything else had shrunk away. And the biggest, box, the biggest box was family, and the next box was spirituality. And so my question is, I, I took this, and I, I work in prisons back in, in Australia. And I say to them, I show them these two boxes, and I say, guys, if this is what's going to count at the end of your life, why would it not count now? It doesn't make sense. And for Stu, he had a faith. And I chatted to him a bit about it. And he actually said those two boxes. He said, Dean, look, I'm kind of okay where I'm going. But it's my family. It's my family. It's my family. And that's what he cared about, is you guys. He looked at, and that was what, his, what broke him most about going, was you guys. Okay. And so what is this faith that, that Stu had? And in today's world, we've got quite a religious worldview. 
some of us may have, some of us may have an atheistic worldview, whatever. But for the religious people, quite often, it's a, what we call a merit-based view. In other words, if I'm a good person and I do the right thing and I do this and I do that, then God will one day look at me, weigh me in the scales and say, yep, you make it. And he'll say to somebody else, nope, that you just fell short. Sorry, you don't make it. And that's kind of the way that religious system works. All right, but a contrary to this story is the thieves on the cross. According to the Bible, there were, Jesus was hanging on the cross and there were two thieves hanging either side of him, all sentenced, both sentenced to death. And the one thief mocked Jesus and said, why don't you, you're supposed to be the son of God, why don't you get me down off this cross? And the other thief turned, to the, turned and said, but hold on, we deserve to die. We know what we've done. We deserve to die. This man doesn't deserve to die. And then he turned to Jesus and he said, Lord, remember me when you get to paradise. And Jesus turned to him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. And the amazing thing there for that thief is he had no time to get off that cross and go and do a whole lot of good stuff to make it to heaven. It was his belief in who Jesus was that saved him. And that's an important distinction, guys, is that that is the belief that, G that Stu had. And that it doesn't mean that you can go and do what you like and last minute just tick in, I believe in you, Jesus, and tick the box. But there's something genuine about this person, Jesus Christ, that Stu found and I personally have found as well. And that once you get that, it changes your life. And it gives you peace in those sort of areas. Just, I went through Stu's um, um, Facebook page and a few other things, and I just wrote down some of the words. I summarized some of the things that other people said, because it's okay if, if a, a brother gets up and says it. But this is just what some of the people have said, and I haven't put names on it. You may recognize one of your comments, um, but I'm not identifying people. Words said about Stu. Positive, uplifting. When we were tossed off the farm, Always staying in contact, his long, unruly hair, a generous heart, vibrant, full of crap, crazy polo playing, living life at 90 miles an hour, a legend in the polo world. Stu is a non-judgmental, inspirational guy and a true character, kind, generous, a joy to be with, full of laughter. Happy, smiling, positive man, a thrill to be around when growing up. A wonderful man who could laugh like no one else. A wonderful and caring man. A legend. Such a good man. Beautiful soul. Stu, you didn't have any enemies. Always loved seeing him. A wonderful boss and friend at Carswell Meets. Such a privilege and honor to have known him. An incredibly smart and thoughtful man. He was a legend. I loved to see him at polo with a ribbon flying out the back of his helmet. A special friend to me. Going to miss him stopping me on the road to ask about family and horse news. A flamboyant man. Many people have wonderful memories of Stu. Always remembered for his generosity and community spirit. Riding free, now galloping across the skies. Such a friend to me in our gym days. Amazing guy and good friend. Dr. Ashmore and the Avenues and, and some of the staff down in South and here said when Stu went into the hospital, he just caused chaos. And he was saying hello to people and asking what was wrong with them and chatting and full of life. And the nurses loved him. They ran to, to see him when he came in. Finally, what I'm going to say about Stu, and this is a quote by Edwin Cole, out of his book, Maximize Manhood. Life's greatest poverty is not in riches, but in spirit. And life's greatest wealth is not in money, but in relationships. And I think Stu was rich in both of those. He was rich in spirit, and he was very rich in relationships. Thank you. There's a song that's going to be played now. It's one of Stu asked for this to be played. It's called Oceans by a crowd called Hillsong. If you guys could play that. And then after that, um, Mark Swanick is going to come up and give the eulogy.
prepared there. Try again next time, guys. Well, yeah. I'm really impressed here. I know I have to stand behind a meter, but for someone with no fashion sense, he certainly had a fashion sense. Well done. He actually, you've combed your hair. What a waste. You've come in longs. What a waste. We're here to celebrate. Not a, this is not a eulogy. This is a celebration of a life. Dean, you summed up everything I was going to say about Stuart. You know, for me, it's a privilege to be here. I was Plumtree educator, reps educator. I sat next to this Gilmore. And if I fluff this, it's because I couldn't copy off him because he was only good at maths. So it's a privilege to represent Stu and more family to represent Stuart's family. That's the whole family. And you are a wonderful family. And yes, it has been a sad week. It really has been. But this is a week I think we can all be grateful for. When Stu stopped fighting, which was last weekend, he was taken by God by Monday. And that we are very grateful for. You know, Stu also, we had time to be with him. We had time to say goodbye to him. And that's what makes Stu such a special person. You know, he showed us how to fight for life. And he gave us all a chance to say goodbye. That was awesome. Stu, we all know the Gilmore family. Stu was such a part of a, an amazing family. And over the years, farming families um, is a product like so many of us here today who are, are from products of farming families. And, and the life in Zim. Stu carried that upbringing with him all through his life. And sharing our similar backgrounds, he was great, full of laughter. Haven't we heard that already? The ability to connect with so many people and different people over the years. And I think that's who we all represent here for Stu. So Stu, you're looking down at us, wherever you are. That's why we're here, because you were the one who brought us together. Individually, not in big crowds. Stu was amazing like that. You know, um... We started our friendship at reps. We were this big. He had really particularly big ears, which he was always very conscious of. But we were six, seven years old at reps. And we would sit. I can even remember where we sat. It was on the rocks by the swimming pool or at the back of reps. And we would talk, like everyone's been saying. Talk about us and our family. You know, that was a little guy. And he... He was never changed. Um, Stu made you feel important. And that's an art. And it's something we can take from him. And it's just great chatting about life. Stu, if you were a bonehead, his swearing jar filled very quickly. We've got to accept that as well. But he was very good. Um, we, after reps... We went through to Plumtree, and, um, you know, I knew I'd lose my place on this damn thing. So, and so, it was um, Plumtree, that was out with, out last, out play, and we survived Plumtree. And, um, but, Stu again at Plumtree, it was great. We were great friends at Plumtree. And then, over the years, Stu, after Plumtree, um, we split our different ways, and he, Stu went off to college, and then came back. And I have to recall, Stu loves sailing for some reason. I think he's an awful sailor, though. But he loves sailing. And he always had a really silly question when you're in the middle of the lake and there's a boat on the farther end. He would say to you, Mark, what do you think they're doing? I don't know, Stu. Do you know how often that used to happen? I don't know, Stu. How would I know? And he would ask it again quite soon after. And the one evening, we were at Tiger Bay. We'd moored up. And um, I went up early up to the restaurant. And uh, Anne Healers said to me, Who are you sailing with, Mark? I said, No, Stu Gilmore. He says, Very charming, isn't he? So I'm not going to agree to that, but yes, he was. So um, 
he's always chatting to the people. When we stop sailing, he'll walk down the the shore, chat to people, and disappear. Always carry a cup of tea, obviously. That was standard. And anyway, so Reggie Stu came up and joined us for dinner. In the course of the evening, Stu was charming. I remember we had a series of ladies sitting on the table, and they were quite elderly. So Anne says to me, you see, he is charming. I said, okay, Anne. And then a, few, a little bit later I heard, I think the monkey just got out the bag. Someone had mentioned an insurance agent, and Stu, the monkey, did escape. But that was Stu. Stu was a bee streamer. We were in bee streams all through our time. He worked. He was a tough sportsman. You know, he was determined in everything he did. Swimming, water polo, rugby, and he loved running. We all know he loved running. I'm going to kick this thing over just now. Um, and I see that that's come through all his life. Stu was healthy, running until his illness caught up with him. I think, Mandy, isn't it? He was still running. I mean, last time we were up before all this, yeah. And at times, you know, he would run with Mandy, which I wouldn't have never done, but anyway, she's too <laughs> fast. And then he ran with his dogs. And um, he always was a healthy guy. And I've just lost my settings, so let me push this back. Unfortunately, with, with minus one hand and finger and stuff, you see these, these digital things do go west. Yeah. Um, despite his health, his healthy life, sadly in the few, in the few last weeks, um, Stu did battle with his lungs. And th that, I think, was one of the saddest things to see about someone who's so healthy. Um, Stu used to drink tea like you can't believe. When we went sailing, we'd always take a couple hundred bags of tea bags. And then he used to drink that dreadful stuff, cat, or what's it called, or uh, mate, yeah, that Argentinian rooibos. And, oh, what dreadful stuff. But Stu was always looked after himself, he was always healthy. After, after school, like I said, Mandy, Stu came back with Mandy and Jess. And he was on the farm in Marindero where we caught up again. And I've actually now found my place again. And that was the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was so nice to have them all back. When Stu came back, Michonne Lad East had his first Peugeot 405 with bull bars on both ends or just the one. <laughs> both ends. Yeah. You know, he was on Chinnery. And I remember watching Stu doing fire guards. I, he was so chuffed about his fire guards. He was always proud about everything he did on the farm. April, going out, doing the fire guards. So I said to him, Stu, don't you think it's a bit early for Marindera? He said, why? I've done them now. I can sit back. Anyway, Marindera, the grass still grows in April and May. And he had to do them again when the first frost came. Um, back in the family fold... Stu loved the farms. He loved the ranches. He was a home bird. We couldn't get him to do anything, really, could we, Mandy? He was difficult. You booked all the holidays because he wouldn't do it. And he loved the life he was born into. And that was always such an interesting thing to watch. Cattle, dogs, and family. And I'm not putting it in any special order because that might be the right way it should have been. You know, it depends where you were with Stu. Um, Paco Hills was next, and we were all this side of the country. And Luke, you'd arrived by then on Paco Hills. Um, I was at your christening, and I was your godfather, and I still got to have a bit of a word with you, huh? Hey? <laughs> um, and no, there's no back, backlog of presents for you at all. Yeah. Um, once Luke was out of nappies, it was not long for Gilmore. When I'm talking about a Gilmore, I'm only talking about one today. I know there are a few more around. And he started chirping, how hey, you guys haven't started your families and we out of nappies. And we already finished. Anyway, so it was cattle, cars with bull bars.
made furniture do you remember that chunky chunky furniture you used to make and always a beautiful garden but that was you mandy and that was home to the gilmores on Paco, Paco hills anyway nappy days were not over as it turned out beautiful alaska arrived same age as our youngest son and brought much joy to Stu and mandy um i'm sure alaska you're listening to us now and this is all about the family and all of you together. Mandy, you always had amazing gardens. Obviously, you inherited it. And you always had amazing gardens. Lovely homes, and Stu was always proud of them. You know, it was amazing. Even though he used to complain about the labor and all the equipment you used to take, <laughs> he loved them. He was proud of his homes, and, you know, that, that was great. Trying to get away, as I say, except for sailing. I don't know why I like sailing. I used to sit there for seven days and do nothing. I think that's probably why. It was always such a mission. After Paco Hills, kids grew as they tend to, and the expansion of the family business, and then you moved your home to Carswell, another lovely home you guys created. And so polar tournament, tournaments, toddlers, nannies, horses, that was our lives, wasn't it? Stu was in his element being social and chatting at the tournaments. I know there are quite a few polo players here. I never really figured out if Stu really enjoyed his polo. You know, he always came away bruised and broken. His horses were okay. But he definitely loved being among like-minded people. Proud of his trailers and loved building his trailers to suit his polo. Stu loved his trucking, mechanical side of the business. He was always making, improving vehicles, and the workshops were very much part of business. Both my sons are mechanical, and when we've been sailing, Luke, we went sailing one trip, didn't we? And when my sons came sailing with Stu, when the conversation dropped, you just, you just said something about a truck, and then we were off again. We spent days talking about mechanical stuff, which I have no interest in. Stu was gentle. He was straight down the line, he didn't hesitate to correct you. Sitting in Ian's house the other day while Stu was battling to breathe, I saw how Stu touched people's lives, which is something actually we will never see because we can't see the whole picture of Stu. Um, Stu represented so much the mix of his parents, the business and the kindness of his parents and his upbringing. I was sitting there and Eric, I don't know if Eric's here today, but if you are, Eric, I'm sharing your story. And Eric came in and worked for Stu for some, for, since he was a, de a delinquent. Uh, sorry, when? Yeah, 18. And in the marketing side. And Stu's sitting there with his mask, putting it on, putting it on. And he says, we points at Eric and he says, we bought him a house, you know. And... So I thought, oh, wow, okay. Look, I can never under, untangle the Gilmore Empire. I don't know who I, we, us stands for. I just, we just know it's, it's someone, okay. So Eric looked up and he said, yeah, no, you bought a house. But I went without pay for six years. <laughs> It didn't surprise me because that was Stu, always making a plan and, and um, sorry, I've lost my place, and making a plan and helping someone. I don't think we really know of how many similar stories there are out there. Stu loved his family. Mandy, together you and Stu, like so many of us, have brought our families through three lifetimes of cuck in this country you know he would phone me and i would see his number ringing and Stu had the most incredible knack and dean again has said it when he phones guys and people commenting of phoning me when i needed someone to phone me he was amazing like that i always thought it was god telling to phone me so god found his donkey in Stu to phone me and you know Stu was he would phone and ask about the family and then would i'd catch up on all of you guys one by one 
and it was great. Um, if I have to attach a word to Stu, and don't worry Robin, you can, it's going to be a safe one. I will always attach the words, well done, to Stu Gilmore. You know, those are powerful words and so represented a kind and caring person Stu was when you deserved it. Mandy, you've got a big hole in your life now. And now it's my turn to say to you, well done. Well done. The past year has been difficult with Stu. He wasn't the easiest guy. We all know that. I listened to your meeting, Mandy, with Stu, the doctor in Joburg. And I heard a strong, independent, to-the-point wife. I was so impressed the way you handled that difficult discussion. Mandy, well done. It was well done. The independence and the strength that, that got you through this year will get you through the years in the, in, ahead of us. Jess, Luke, Alaska, Dad was always proud of you. You know, Jess, you had a special relationship with the old man. I see your dad in you. And don't lose that and keep that spirit alive. Other people's opinions were not really important to you and not to you either. Keep it alive. Luke, when we caught up with Dad two weeks ago, just before, you just spent the afternoon with him and you spent time. He was glowing. I have to tell you, he was glowing. I imagine Moses looked like that when he came off Mount Sinai. And Stu was so, he was so proud of you. He kept saying, you're a bright guy. There have been difficult times, but he loved you. And he was just so appreciated that time that you spent with him and you guys just talking. You know the day I'm talking about. And so it's my turn to say, well done, Luke. Brilliant. Now, Luke, keep to that track that you talked about with your dad to honor him, because that is the life ahead. Alaska must be very hard being so far away, and you are, after all, after all, Gilmore and a home bird. Dad loved your recent time here, and our broken hearts and grief are shared with you so far away. Keep his spirit alive in America to see you through life. Finally, Stu loved dreadful music, rock music, I think it was. It just didn't ever make sense to me that he listened to such rubbish for such a nice guy. So I'm going to finish up with Psalm 50. It's written by Asaph, a singer and a worship leader in the time of Solomon and David. Psalm 50 says, God does not worry about material things, but is satisfied by worship through thanksgiving and prayer. Stu found that space. And that was amazing for me because that is the prayer of a mother for many years. And it was great talking to Stu about that part of life and the spiritual part. I'm going to read Psalm 50, not too long. It goes like this. I will not rebuke you. This is what God's saying, remember. I will not re rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings which are continually before me. I will not take a bull from your house or the goats out of your fold. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on the thousand hills is his. I will eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats. Offer to God your thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in a day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. God, Stuart, is with God on a thousand hills filled with cattle today. And I'm sure he's giving advice. So thank you, Stu, for making us all important or feeling important, and thank you for your life here. So God bless you all. Thank you. Um, I don't know if Chris and uh, Pat, Pat are here. Are they here? Are they? Could you pop up and just give a quick word on on the polo? This is a this is unplanned, um, but. We just thought as polo was such a big part of Stu's life, we've got to try and include that. Okay. 
you okay with this? I'm quite short. Please excuse my digital notes because they were written in a hell of a hurry and I blame Mandy for this. She didn't give me any time. I was told to ask to do this on the way in this morning. So bear with me, please. I look around here and I see many of you here who risked your lives on the polo field with Stu. You can blame Dave Meikle for that. He was the one who got Stu into polo at Banquet many, many years ago. So I can remember Stu arriving at Banquet with two bossy cops in his trailer. From there, he progressed right through to his horses he was so proud of that used to often be chosen by international teams to play. Stu played at Banquet for many years, as I said. Unfortunately, because he had a semi-education at Plumtree, he never read the rule book. After a while he moved to Harare and he ended up there as the captain of the club. Then from there he joined Mzari, where he played for many years until he retired several years ago. Stu, as been said right through here today, was a great uh, socializer and a great team man. That's the word I'm looking for, team man. He was a great asset to any club he represented. He was always willing to help, he, whether it was physically to pick stables or whether it was to do donate meat for tournaments or whatever it was. He was a great tournament, uh, or at least uh, club man. In 2007, I went with Stu, Mandy, Bob, Sue, and um, who was the other one? Yeah, to RG. Anyway, we had a great trip. I think it's the nicest trip, best trip I've ever been on. Stu was the life and soul of the party. He was in his element. He stayed on a, the estancia of, of uh, Horacio. He loved his cattle, as you all know, and he was in his element there. We went to a, an auction sale in, in BA where they sold 10,000 head in three hours. It was quite incredible. Sue also, I mean, sorry, Stu also loved the polo there. He was fascinated by the open. Back home, we have all have had a picture of Stu flying up the polo field, often in the wrong direction. Hair, <laughs> hair flying, beard blowing, and he just loved his polo. He didn't mind who he played with, what the results of the game was. He was a true team man and he will be sadly missed by the whole of the polar community. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm just going to read a few uh, messages that came from people that couldn't make it to the funeral. Um, the first one is Peter Lobel. Tribute. Stu, you're going on another trip, which is under God's direction. I just pray it's pain-free. Pain -free. Rather than hiding it, you're talking about it. That speaks to your honesty and the fact that you can face the journey with strength. You will get strength from your friends and family by doing this. What a brave person you are to do this. I shall always remember, one, you standing up to, a bull to bullies. Two, our wonderful breakfast after inspecting my cattle. Three, your comforting and encouraging tap on my shoulder from time to time. And four, a scarf blowing in the wake of you pulling away from me in a polo game. These are a few of my wonderful memories. Stu, and I don't know how to pronounce this, I'm sorry, this is a Jewish word or Yiddish word, and it's mensch, of menches. I looked it up, I had to, never seen it before, and it means person of integrity and honor, also kind and caring. So you are a mensch of menches. I hope I can see you soon, sending only love and admiration, Peter. Dear Stuart, We'd like to 
have a walk much longer distance with you, have walked much longer distance with you. Sadly enough, Faith decided that you have to walk alone from now on. We'll miss your company. Farewell, my friend. Gert, Catherine, Manon, and Margot. Is that right? My name is Angelique Princely from South Africa. My husband and myself had the privilege of, to meet Stu in Mozambique in 2022. We, we met Luke in South Africa. Since then, we've been friends with Mandy and Luke. Met Jess too with a great, uh, great servant heart. Mandy with a gift of organizing things and good planning. It's an honor to have met Stuart. I had the privilege to take care of him for a week while he was here in SA for treatment and visit him in hospital. I've learned that Stu realized that the things we worry about in this life don't mean that much. Philippians 4.6 Do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. He also realized and confessed and let go of hurts that people caused and to forgive and set them free. This was important for us to remember. As he, we've got to remember Jesus as he died for our sins. We missed you and all his wonderful stories and the love he shared in his, in his fragile time. He made some jokes and laughed, and to me he was so wonderful. You'll always be in my, my heart, and he, she called him Oom Stu. Um, the next one is Gareth. Uh, let me just see this. I'm, I'm, I'm better with technology on this one, buddy. It's just better to have paper. Okay, uh, Rolf Hansen. Rolf, I met Stuart approximately 30 years ago when I began working at Carswell Meets. About 20 years ago, I started to work more closely with Stuart, managing the Carswell Group. We faced many challenges together as Zimbabwe was going through turbulent times. Stu's positive attitude and dedication always prevailed. I remember when he broke his leg, he insisted on coming to work in a modified car with a driver. The work, the staff would then carry him up to the office, and this was a reflection of Stuart's loyalty and dedication to the company. I always discussed my off-the-tangent ideas with him, and his common-sense approach always seemed to steer me right. I'm proud to be his work colleague and friend. Stuart will be sorely missed by his family, work colleagues and friends. And Stu, I know you would like to have a simpler life. Running a farm with a few cattle and your horses. Travel well, my friend. Gareth N. Evans. Sorry we didn't get more on-field play together. Not many people can say it like you did, Stu. A bloody legend. Your kindness and willing to help, willingness to help are rare in this world. Stacy Logan. One moment can change a day. Stu, I can't imagine how you're feeling. I hope the pain is not unbearable. I hope to, to get some, spend some time. You get to spend some time walking your cattle and horses, letting all the memories run through your head. I've been so lucky to have crossed paths with you and enjoy so much time with you on the farm and your horses. You gave me the privilege of riding and training so many different horses, the chance to learn to ride better and to play polo, something I dreamt of, and you gave me the opportunity to do so. The opportunity you gave me opened up my next door to me, allowing me to make a profession with horses. I owe this all to you, Stu. Thank you for helping my sister get a job with Whedon, which too set her on the path of success. I have so much to thank you for, and I know that I am one of many that you have guided, cared for, and helped in life. I am so grateful to you, Stu. Your smile and laughter is infectious, and may you continue to spread it. Thank you for always keeping in touch. You are an amazing man. Thank you for changing my life and for being someone I can count on. For treating me so with, with with so much care, respect, and love. Thank you, Stu. This is Meg and Joe because they didn't want to get up, but fly high, but you were loved by all who crossed your path. You instilled in Joe and me the love of horses, and your glass was always half full. What, no matter what challenges you faced, your words when Rourke was diagnosed with cancer. Stush, life is not fair. The sooner you accept that, the happier you will be. Have been my mantra. I'm sorry we were just too late to hug you one last time. I love you, Stu. So blessed to have caused, called you my brother. And I'm sure you're having a good chat with Dad about the Brahmin herd up there. This is from Broughton. We'll cherish the mo memories of Cuddy Sark Kariba 1978 digs in London and in digs in London, various holidays in Mozambique together. All our love and strength, Tony Broughton and family. Um, and he sent some pictures uh, with him and fish, catching fish. And then he says, that's how it was, Stu. Woman loved us and the fish feared us. <laughs> I 
All right. Now we're going to have the family section, and so Libs is going to come up and read a poem. I think so. Good morning, everyone. I feel that this poem is from Stu to all of us who loved him. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the soft, uplifting rush of quiet birds in rounded flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand on my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Thank you. Just the sound guys, have you got that clip from Alaska, please, if you could play that. I'm not quite sure where to start, Dad. I have the unique opportunity. It's just louder, yeah. I'm not quite sure where to start, Dad. I have the unique opportunity to write this to you, rather than to all the people who love you and that you will be leaving behind. Dad, my best mate and biggest cheerleader in life. I wouldn't be who I am today without you. Your love for horses and animals shaped my childhood. I will be forever grateful that you shared your love of riding with me. Not only the endless hours of fun in and out of the saddle it has given me, but also for the hard lessons it has taught me. Horsemanship is the art of mastering our own movements, thoughts, emotions and behaviours, not the horses. Listening to your stories of all your travels throughout Europe and across Africa sparked in me a curiosity for the world. You gave me to the courage to seek out the path less traveled. One that has led me to America and many great adventures that I had there, which ultimately led me to meeting the love of my life. There's a quote by Charles Dickens that goes, imagine one selected day struck out of your life and think how different its course would have been. Think for a moment of the long chain of iron or gold, of thorns or flowers that would never have bound you, but for the formation of the first link on that memorable day. Dad, you have not only shaped who I've become, but also influenced some of the best decisions I've made in my life. So thank you. If kind words alone could have been the cure for you, Dad, then you would have been saved 10 times over for, for all those that love you have managed to tell you. So as you prepare to leave this world and enter another, you better have a cup of tea waiting for me for when I finally join you. I love you, Dad. Be right, Jess. Dad, you were the kindest, most generous person, not just to your family, but to everyone I knew. Many conversations with started with, hey chap, how can I help? And ended with, no problem, I'll see what I can do. That was you in a nutshell, Dad. Always ready to help, always ready to give advice. And that's, this is a quality that you instilled in all three kids. You always used to say to us, no one wants to hear your problems, so don't start sprouting them now. My dad was always happy, always, but never more than on the polo field. He adored the game and the people. His one piece of sage advice to me, if Robbie Meikle takes a full swing, you duck, no matter what. Dad loved his animals, his horses, his dogs, his cattle, even a bird or two. I could talk forever about what a good man he was, but everyone knows that. I could never have asked for a better dad, so thank you for always having our backs, for, for never leaving our sides, and for never ending a conversation without the words, I love you, my girl. Wherever you are today, dad, and I'm sure it's not far, may you be on a horse, 
with a dog by your side and a cup of tea in hand. I love you, Dad. Mum, if you'd like to come up and just read yours. Thank you. Look, everything's been said. <laughs> All I can say is, you gave out love freely, and it came back abundantly. And I have had the most precious times with you. You gave Polo, your Polo gave you so much joy, and you gave, have so many dear friends. And when I asked him one evening just before he died, I said, what was the highlight of your life, Dean? At least, <laughs> Stu, sorry, I've got so many of them. Um, and, and he said, Mum, my polo. I loved my polo. And so thank you, all of you, for giving him so much love and so much joy. And if I end, and I want to say thank you to Sonia and Ian, who've been amazing, and to my two girls and to Dean. I'm very lucky to have five, aren't I? So to say goodbye to Stu is hard, but he left me to... All I remember of him is saying, as a little boy, how are you, my boy? I'm fine. And he was fine right through life. And also he said, life is not fair and you must have your cup full. Thank you. <laughs> um, he just asked for that hymn, uh, Worthy is Your Name. And we'll just meditate on Stu. Just...
you can just write some comments and the family would love it if you could write some comments about Stu in that on the inner book here and um, thanks so much just remember the loser at the back there thank you So I've just been asked to announce that there will be tea now. Uh, it'll be followed by a, a lunch. Tea and cakes now just on the right here, or to my right, your left. And then there'll be a, a, a light lunch served after that.